Well, welcome to worship and uh, to all of you, a happy new year. Uh, it's hard to believe that we are now actually in 2021. I hope all of you had a wonderful Christmas and that you stayed safe and that you and your family are well. Uh, but we are now into a new year and we also go into a new liturgical season that we call Epiphany. Epiphany is actually this coming uh, Wednesday, uh, but this is the season of light. And so uh, we move into a time of season of light. Today is also our Communion Sunday, so if you've not had a chance to prepare your elements for our time of communion, uh, please do so now. Uh, go ahead and get some kind of cracker or bread, whatever you want for your bread, as well as whatever you would like for your juice. And so now let us go ahead and uh, prepare our hearts as we hear our call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. The Magi who study the heavens follow a guiding star. O come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. The peoples who live in the shadows see a glorious light. O come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. The Christ who embodies the word unveils God's hidden, hidden plan. O come, let us worship the Lord. God's glory has risen upon us. Amen. Thanks be to God. We light our Christ candle to remind ourselves of Christ's light and love for ourselves and for the world. Will you join me in our opening prayer? Loving and gracious God, you who love us beyond what we are owed, we ask your presence here as we enter into worship to remind us of the grace that we live with day by day. You supply us, Lord, with every blessing. And now as we move toward our season of Epiphany and are thankful for the gift of the Christ child, we ask that you guide us on our journey with you. And we thank you that you are our source of hope and light. And for healing and hope, for wisdom and joy, we lift up our grateful hearts as we come today in worship. We pray all of this in Christ's holy name. Amen. And now we continue our time of worship with the leading of our worship team in our music.
today's scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. And as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First, thank you, David and Ivy, for uh, helping to participate in today's worship service. So as we've heard God's word, we'll, let us go now to prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all who have gathered be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Now you may be wondering why we are listening to scripture about the wise men um, who visit the manger. Uh, believe it or not, we are actually still in Christmas season. Um, yes, there is actually a Christmas season. It's for two weeks. It's the time between Christmas and an Epiphany, which I already mentioned, uh, comes this coming Wednesday, January 6th. Um, you know the 12 days of Christmas song? Well, that's what this whole season of Christmas is about, the 12 days after Christmas, leading us to Epiphany. Let's explore, though, a little bit about our passage of, of Scripture, uh, the journey of the wise men. I think along with the Christmas story, uh, the story of the wise men, or we call them magi, is probably one of the more familiar ones that people know, mainly because uh, many of us grew up hearing the song, uh, We Three Kings. But I venture to guess that not as many people truly understand the significance of this story. You know, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, he is the only one um, who writes about it in his gospel. And it's actually a pretty difficult to completely verify the event. Uh, theologians and others have tried putting a timetable to it. It's hard to do, um, especially in that relationship to the appearance of a star. Uh, we know it happened, uh, but we are just not exactly sure how or when it happened. However, even if there are challenges to all of the evidence, I think it is important for us to recognize that this is truly not a story about a nice, sweet visit to a manger, but instead a very sacred journey. Now getting ready for a trip, not what we could be doing so much right now in our time of pandemic, uh, but if you want a trip to go smoothly, uh, it demands a lot of our own attention, right? It demands some detailed planning. And nowadays, we have a lot of resources available to us to help us plan. 
Um, we have it for all kinds of things. We have the internet, we have our cell phones, um, we have our credit cards. Uh, we can do so many different things to help us plan for our trips. Traveling uh, to other countries uh, demands even additional planning for us, maybe a passport or a visa, um, maybe specific uh, shots that you might get. Um, you might even need to have some understanding of the culture or even possibly an understanding of the different language. But even though it takes a lot of work, all this planning, if we have a purpose or a vision, uh, whether it's business or pleasure, we are then willing to put in the time and effort to make this major effort to go on this trip. Well, the Magi that took that trip also had to go under uh, a major, it was a major undertaking. And while we think uh, scripture tells us that there were just three coming from the east, it wasn't just three of them um, that traveled. We have to remember in those days, they would have traveled by caravan, right? They would have carried a caravan with many, many people, many servants. They would have had to carry their own housing, uh, their kitchens, their food. Uh, there may have been some towns to stay in, but much of their journey would have been in unoccupied land. Um, a few Christmases ago, one of my cousins uh, gave all the rest of us this amazing gift of history. She put together our family's genealogy. One of the things I learned from it, which was kind of fun, is to realize that my own family um, went from a covered wagon from Michigan to Iowa. Um, talk about major planning. Well, what brought my relatives to America and eventually from Michigan to Iowa on a long and somewhat dangerous journey was a vision and a purpose. And what brought these wise men on a long and somewhat dangerous journey was a vision and a purpose. And, the, and Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew also had a purpose in sharing this journey. He wanted people to understand what these men represented to the Israelites, to God, and even to us. First, contrary to all of our uh, peaceful nativity images, um, these men, these magi, were not welcomed visitors to the Romans or to the Israelites. You know, these strangers were from the East, and the East represented those who opposed the powers of Rome, uh, they were also considered a threat to the Israelites. Uh, the East is where most of Israel's conquerors came from, um, such as Babylon and Persia. Uh, the East was also the place where uh, many of the Jews lived in exile um, after the destruction of the first uh, temple. I think this kind of helps us to give a little bit of more context uh, to verse 3 that tells us that Herod was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him. They were not happy to see these men. Not only was Herod threatened by the possibility of a new king, he didn't appreciate other countries knowing about it and especially not coming to pay their respects. Now, these wise men, like I said, are considered to be magi. And magi are basically astrologers. Uh, they are advisors to kings. And these men were very possibly from Persia, uh, which is actually in modern day Iran. Um, the trip, um, if we think about how long it took to get there, the trip could have been well over a thousand miles. So these magi took this major undertaking but they came with their skills in natural science and medicine and philosophy, and they interpreted dreams. And as astrologers, it was their practice to uh, study the important events of the heavens. Uh, 
uh, N.T. Wright, uh, N. Thomas Wright, he's a New Testament theologian. Uh, he explains that the ancient world believed that the heavens and the earth were connected. So if something important was happening on earth, uh, they would see it in the sky. And if something unusual happened in the sky, they would see it on earth. And a phenomenon like a brilliant new star for them would have been worth pursuing. And it was a widely held belief in that time that new stars, when, that when new stars appeared, it meant that a great ruler was born. And there's actually um, documents from Roman historians stating that there, at that time, um, there had been spread all over the, the world, the Orient, um, an, an established belief that at that specific time, there would be someone from Judea um, to rule the world. In addition, um, the Israelites, for the Israelites, the Magi were not considered as being uh, on the up and up. Uh, in other words, they may have been seen as fakes, they may have been seen as charlatans. Um, actually, in the Old Testament, it actually condemns the Magi as idolatrous deceivers to be avoided by godly folk. So for Matthew to even write about the Magi was risky, and it was even considered scandalous. But Matthew wanted to reveal the nature of God and to show that God would reach out to the outsider. This was amazing new news at the beginning of the birth of Christ. Um, Scott, Professor Scott Hosey, he shares this, he says, Matthew is not trying uh, to vindicate astrology or deny the Bible's warnings regarding quacks, such as these magi. Instead, what Matthew may be trying to do is convey the reach of the grace of God. He says also, the Christ child who attracted these old magi, these odd magi, will later have the same magnetic effect on Samaritan adulterers, immoral prostitutes, greasy tax collectors, despised Roman soldiers, and ostracized leopards. In sharing this event, Matthew wanted people to know that with this first faith journey by Gentiles, that God is for all people everywhere. Last, I just want to kind of look at the importance of, of this, their journey, uh, their sacred journey that they undertook. You know, the Magi took a risk um, going on this journey. Uh, they didn't know all that they would encounter. Uh, they weren't completely prepared. Uh, they weren't completely sure of their destination. That's why they asked for help. Um, they took seriously the sign of guidance for them. And while the star was what started their journey, when they got to Jerusalem, they faced a roadblock. And they discovered that they could not learn everything from nature alone. And so they needed more than just nature to point them to the Messiah. They could have given up at that point. But instead, they went and asked for help for additional guidance, which God provided for them um, through God's own word. Uh, we heard in the passage, it's God's own word given to the Jews by the prophet Micah. It was a revelation, this prophecy, that God had up until then only given to the Hebrews, to the Israelites. And now God's word was guiding unbelievers. I think this is one of faith's ironies. 
These are Gentiles who know of the birth of a king from their science and travel all this way to honor, to honor him and to pay him respect. And here we have the Jews who know the place of birth through their scripture, who seem not to care. You know, sometimes the answer to life is right under our noses. And yet we don't always pay attention to it because we become complacent or stagnant and unwilling to see something new. I think this is, this is the lesson uh, we can learn from the wise men. To be open to something new. To be willing to take chances. To have endurance. To have patience. But also to constantly, constantly be moving towards our vision and our purpose. The essence of faith, I think, comes in the form of a journey. And we are meant to be constantly moving in our faith, moving in knowledge, um, challenged to how we respond to the world, um, to be actively listening to God's spirit and God's guidance working in us and through us and also even in the world around us. Um, one of my favorite books, uh, and I, it's a bestseller, and I'm sure some of you are very familiar with it, maybe you read it. It's called The Alchemist, and it's by Paulo Colo. And it's a fable about following your dreams. Uh, if you're not aware of it, it's about a young man, a shepherd, um, who is told of a great treasure. And so he decides to go pursue it. and. And of course he goes off to this faraway land and he gets swindled and he receives words of advice from an old king and a gypsy woman. But he also has to learn how to rely on his own inner voice. And he ultimately returns to his home to find that the treasure was buried right at the place where he first had his first dream. In the end, he reflects back on the many roads that he traveled and of the strange way that God had chosen to show him his treasure. And he ends the story by looking up to the sky and he's shouting to the wind that, that, that if the wind knew that the treasure was right where he started, why did he have to go all the way on a journey just to come back to the same spot? And the wind replies back to him that the journey was as important as the answer because it was the journey that helped him grow wiser, more open, and able to find his true love. In this time of pandemic, we have also been on uh, in 2020, um, a journey. We have had challenging times, difficult times, times over this 2020 that we wanted to give up, times of weariness. But I ask you, as we enter into this new year, what have you learned about you? What have you learned about your faith? You know, this, this time has also given us new opportunities to stretch our faith, to grow our faith, to build up our endurance in challenges, to not become defeated, but to look for places of hope, of purpose and vision, and also to find new ways to become better stewards of our world, and I think even the biggest challenge, which I think has been a part of human nature uh, from the very beginning, and which we face, I think, even more so now, this has been given us, this gives us a new opportunity to find ways to heal broken relationships and broken institutions. Our own life journeys, like the wise men, like that shepherd, 
is part of how we gain faith and how God leads us in our own sacred journeys. In God's eyes, our sacred faith journey is as important as our first time that we said yes to Jesus. God's gift to us is how God reveals himself to us over and over and over again in our own journey. And to know God's goodness and to know God's wisdom, God's love for us more fully. But the point I hope you can get today, the point I think is, is that we must actually be on a journey. We must actually be on a journey of faith with God. But that journey has to be more than just an internal one, a spiritual one, a feel-good one just for me. It has to be one that has that vision and that purpose. I want to end with a quote um, by Thomas Keating, uh, who passed away a few years ago. He is one of the people who was uh, kind of foundational in the contemplative movement. And he writes that our relationship with God and that inner prayer, that inner spiritual life, must also lead us um, to action on behalf of the world. Um, here are his words. The power of the stars is nothing compared to the energy of a person whose will has been freed and who is thus enabled to co-create the universe together with God. God's top priority is the creation of a world in which the goods of the earth are equitably distributed, where no one is forgotten or left out, and where no one can rest until everyone has enough to eat, the oppressed have been liberated, and justice and peace are the norm among the nations and religions of the world. The commitment to the spiritual journey is not a commitment to just pure joy, but to taking responsibility for the whole human family, its needs, and its destiny. We are not our own. We belong to everyone else. As we move into this new season of light, may we, like the wise men, who are faithful and persistent, be open to the new ways God guides us in our sacred journeys. Amen. We now come to our time of communion, and if you've not had a chance to already gather your elements, I encourage you to do so if you'd like to join us in communion. Um, this feast has been set by God's sacrificial love for each one of us. Um, no matter who you are, no matter uh, where you come from, if you are on a, a journey with God, you are invited to this table. God calls us to draw in faith and in love. Listen to the words from the Gospel of John. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share this feast which he has prepared. Now if you will join me in the sacrament of communion and sharing in the response. Come to the Lord's table, all you who love him. We come to the Lord's table, opening our hearts to receive God's love. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. If you will please now join me in prayer, and we'll close with the Lord's prayer. Please join me. O holy God, we come humbled by your love for us this day. You create and sustain all things by your word. 
your word, Jesus the Christ, who became flesh and dwelt among us so that we might see and hear and know you in ways never before possible. But Lord, we sometimes do not always trust in you and in your sustaining power. And we sometimes doubt that your abundant love will overcome hatred in our world. Forgive our disbelief. Have mercy upon us for our failure to walk in Christ, to walk in Christ's light. And by the power of your spirit of work in us, may we continue our sacred journeys walking and being in Christ so that your love will continue in our lives and into the lives of our community. God, as we begin this brand new year, we pray for the world. We pray for all nations. We pray especially for those places where uh, resources are in short supply. We pray for uh, places where the pandemic is overwhelming the healthcare systems. We pray for all who are desperately ill, for the doctors and the nurses who care for them and for their families. We also want to pray for our own country as we transition to new leadership and a new administration, we pray that this nation may navigate this change peacefully. Open the hearts of all who lead us in our states and our nation, that they might embrace bipartisan efforts to address the health and economic distress in our land. And Lord, we also want to lift up our prayers for our own church family uh, especially those families who have recently lost loved ones, uh, those who've been ill, uh, those who are distressed or lonely, be with them, shine your light upon them, and we pray for your peace that passes understanding to fall upon them. Shape us to love as Christ loved, Lord, so that we might bear witness to your light in our broken and distrustful world. Help us to embody uh, your light as your witnesses to our world. And now, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and wine. That the bread we break and the cup we, we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. And by your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. And as we ask all of this in Christ's name, we share now in the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And when Jesus was with his disciples, those who loved him, and those he loved, he took the bread, and after he blessed it, giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he said to them, this is my body, broken for you. Whenever you take of it, do so in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, given for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you take it, do so in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so now I invite you to take the bread, and as you take it by yourself or with your family, and if you're passing it, share these words with one another. This is Christ's body broken for you, broken for me.
yourself or if you're with others to pass it and share in these words. This is Christ's blood shed for you, shed for me. receive the sacrament of life, giving you thanks for Jesus Christ, our peace and hope. And through your light, unite your church throughout the world in continuing Christ's ministry of love and servitude, so that your name may be praised. Amen. So we have just a couple of announcements today. Uh, next Sunday, January 10th, uh, we will be having worship through Zoom, just like we did our Christmas Eve service. And the reason we're doing it is so that we can ordain and install our incoming um, elders and deacons. So I hope you will join us. Um, we encourage you to log on early to check your internet connections, but also maybe to have a little bit of uh, greeting time in the morning. Um, I think a Zoom link will be sent to you at least sometime this week, and then hopefully um, either on Saturday or maybe early Sunday morning. So look for those links coming to you. Um, also, um, uh, in the next few weeks, we will be collecting for the Christmas Joy Offering. I know that Bob Uchida uh, wrote a wonderful article in the Clarion about it, and I encourage you to give to it. Uh, the purpose of it is so important. It's to help our retired church workers, but also uh, an important issue right now is to help our colleges who are especially in leadership development with students of color. So you'll find details in the Clarion, and I believe we have a couple weeks more uh, that you can send it in those donations. Um, also, just a thank you for all of you who gave the end of your gifts, as well as uh, all of you who continue to contribute so faithfully um, to the ministry of this church here in Altadena. Um, just one last quick, actually two, two last uh, quick announcements. First, I wanted to say thank you to the deacons uh, for giving us uh, masks uh, with a wonderful logo on it. And I thank you so much that the staff truly appreciates that. And the last announcements is that my patio fellowship will start up again uh, beginning on January 17th. So uh, start looking again for invitations to join me so that I can get to know you and you can get to know me a little bit better in our transition journey. Uh, and now for the benediction. Hold on to the light of Christ. It is the way of respect for all people. Christ's light provides forgiveness and mercy and grace. And I pray that you will walk in Christ's light as you go in on your sacred journey. And now go forward in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.